Hi, it's Tim again on Digital Woodworking. Today, this is not a planned project. It's something that kind of came over the threshold. A good friend of mine and my former assistant, Reed Anderson, who's a fantastic furniture maker, is teaching a class using a special technique in, for doing inlays. And what he does is he does inlays that are thick and above the surface, and then he uses other materials for the inlays. In this case, he's doing a flower. The flower looks like, like this. The area of the flower, the leaves and the stems are, is all going to be cut out of wood. He'll fit that in there and then he'll delicately carve to get three-dimensional quality. And again, it'll sit above the surface. What Reed needed help on is the actual flower area itself, the bloom up here. So what he wants to do is make this out of mother of pearl. I have a big collection of different mother of pearl pieces here. Looks like this. It comes uh, from a guitar making supplier and it's about 60 thousandths of an inch thick. And so when done, they'll sit above like 20, 30 thousandths of an inch above the surface. It looks really beautiful. So the, the technique that I'm gonna use today was originally came from a friend of mine, David Micah. David Micah is one of the best custom guitar makers in the country. His website, Micah Guitars, you can go see his work. One of the things that David does is he does these incredible inlays in the necks and the headstock of his guitars. They're beautifully done, such as a butterfly where each of the individual feathers are cut and glued on. It looks incredible against that Gaboon ebony surface of a fretboard. So the way he does it is essentially he cuts out the area, the hollowed out area, usually referred to as a socket with a CNC, and then he cuts out the parts of the uh, mother of pearl that'll be inlaid in there. So for example, if you had a circle that was one inch in diameter and you wanted to put a mother of pearl inlay that was one inch in diameter, it can't be the same diameter as, as the socket, the hollowed out area. This diameter of mother of pearl has to be what's referred to as offset. In other words, it has to be slightly less, like 0.998 inches instead of, point, instead of one inch in diameter. That's referred to again as an offset. Now offsets are something that are, um, and creating an offset in a CAD software is usually very easy. It's simply a command or some sort of tool that comes up and you could sit there with a one inch circle and you can make it either bigger or smaller. David's offsets are typically a couple of thousands difference. In this case, we need a little more room because it's being laser cut and because of the differences in techniques here. I'm gonna make the offset around four thousandths, maybe five thousandths of an inch. I ran some tests previously. So right here, you can see the flower area. These little burn areas around here are typical of a laser cutter. They could be sanded off before you do this. And I ran out uh, a sample of uh, the flower area over here with its nine parts. I ran it out of some uh, thin, uh, walnut that I had resawn had around the shop so I can test my fit. All right. The typical technique is, is you'd put glue inside the socket here, area here, the CA, the cyanoacrylate glue. Then you take the mother of pearl piece, you would spray it with the accelerant like this, and then you would quickly drop it in there and press it down. The accelerant activates the CA glue. It comes up a lot faster and stuff. And that works really well. But in this technique, I need to actually have the mother pearl slit sit slightly above the surface. So rather than use that technique to where I have flipped the drawing over, I milled it out upside down so that I could glue it down into the socket, the, the uh, hollowed out area, I need to have it sit right side up. So what I'm going to use is what's referred to as the blue tape trick. If you haven't heard about it, it's definitely something that every digital woodworker should know about. The blue tape trick uh, consists of putting down a piece of, of course, blue tape on the surface that you're gonna work on. In this case, a piece of uh, MDF and piece that I have here. And this is very important. So what you wanna do is take a burnishing tool or some sort of uh, plastic material here, and you wanna rub it in really hard. You really want it attached really hard. Then you wanna do the same thing on your mother of pearl. So you just put it on there like this, you rub it on, then you trim off the rest. So in this case, I've already done this on a couple of these pieces. You can see it here. So this is pressed very hard, this is pressed very hard. 
then what you do is you dribble on your cyanoacrylate in the area that this is going to glue down. Then you spray the activator, the accelerant right here onto the back of the um, mother of pearl and you press it down. And of course it sets up instantly. So the benefit for this is, is even if it holds well, and this works really well for uh, fairly light duty woodworking. You wouldn't do this for some big, huge, thick piece of wood or something like that. But if it's a fairly light material, it works really well. So it'll hold it firm while you're machining. And when you're done, all you have to do is pull the tape off and peel it off. And it works out just terrific. So let's get started and see how it goes. So to summarize up to this point, I showed you how I'm going to cut out the mother of pearl. The blue tape trick will hold everything in place. And then from there, you'll be able to peel off the blue tape. But there's one other interesting challenge to this project, and that's the mother of pearl itself. As you can see here, I have this assortment of various odd shaped pieces. This is how mother of pearl comes. Unlike wood or a piece of plywood, it doesn't come in big sheets like this. It comes in these very random sizes. The challenge is, is how can I make maximum use of these very odd shapes and get all those nine little parts out and come up with 12 or 15 sets for the students of Reed's class? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, this backing material here. Now, I happen to cut this at 4 inches by 12 inches. Now, that is a known dimension now, now that I know that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to overlay and glue on using the blue tape trick these mother of pearl pieces onto each of these boards. So you can see here I have laid all this out. The next challenge is to be able to lay out the parts that I'm going to cut. There's nine little parts in this flower here throughout these pieces of mother of pearl. Now some of these pieces are not big enough to hold the entire flower, so I may need to take some flower parts and put them a little here and two of them over there and three over here and nine over there, whatever. I need to be very efficient. And to do that, I'm going to use what's referred to as nesting software. Now this was a four by eight sheet of plywood. Nesting software helps cabinet makers lay out the, uh, the doors for the cabinets and the drawer fronts, etc., and puts them around in the most optimal way. So there's very little waste. It just packs them in as, as carefully as possible. I could do the same thing with these mother of pearl pieces. But first, I have to input these. So I'm going to take these boards, and I'm going to lay them down in my flatbed scanner in my office, and I'm going to scan them in. Now, if you have a cell phone of some sort you could, and a camera, you could do that as well. You just have to make sure you're absolutely perpendicular to the scene that you're shooting and make sure that you shoot the entire board. And the reason for that is this is a known dimension. This is 4 inches this way in this case, 12 inches this way. And that way you can take the image that you shoot, or the scan in my case, and you can input it and hold it in the background of your CAD software. And you could scale it and tell on your CAD software that this scales to 4, this scales to 12 inches. The CAD software that I prefer to use is called Rhino 3D. And there's a plugin available from a third party called Mechsoft. And the plugin is called Rhino Cam. They also have a, a freestanding version of Rhino Cam, and it's called Visual Cam. And that's the software I use to program my CNCs for the work that I do. And Visual Cam and Rhino Cam have a module called nesting in there as well. And that allows me again to distribute things throughout all these parts. And that's my next part. Well, the inlay job is now complete. A couple of statistics. Uh, I ran out 16 sets out of all these different pieces of uh, mother of pearl. And it took uh, about two and a half hours to run it out on my CNC. I was running very, very slow. As I mentioned, the smaller the bit, the harder the material, the slower you run. I ran this job at 11 inches per minute. And again, I was using a bit that was 1 32nd or 0.03125 inches in diameter. Uh, one thing about the bits that's important, always buy tons of extra. This kind of uh, project, you could definitely uh, either burn through or use up or break bits just like that. It takes nothing at all to ruin a bit. In this case, I was pretty lucky. I ran this section out here with one bit, and I knew there'd be a lot of wear and tear on the bit. So I changed bits, and I got most of the way through here, and then all of a sudden it caught, and one of the bits broke, and I completed it with a third bit. So anyway, that's Tim for Digital Woodworking Today. In the future, I'll get into more of this kind of detail. I'll, show, I'll talk about inlays and, 
and other ways to do things. But I thought you'd like to see what I had done uh, on this project for my friend Reed Anderson uh, for this project that he's doing and this class that he's teaching. Anyway, so again, this is Tim for Digital Woodworking. We'll see you again later. Thank you.